how you doing? Today, I want to talk about something that really, really annoys me. I'm going to talk about a persistent myth that simply will not die. And I'd like to try to show how that myth is clearly wrong. The reason this video came about is somebody pointed me at a YouTube channel called Today I Found Out, where a very sharply dressed gentleman talks about why did old tiny boxers all pose for photos with the same silly stance? It's got over a million views. Now, firstly, the very phrasing of that question kind of puts my back up a little bit because it shows a clear lack of understanding of how pugilism in its early forms was different to modern boxing. Now, don't get me wrong, he makes some good points, but the basic premise of his argument is that Daniel Mendoza, a fighter who I admire greatly, was the first ever skillful boxer, and people copied the way he stood. He says this, and I quote, I wrote it down so that you'd have uh, the exact words. Before Mendoza, boxing matches tended to consist of two men more or less beating on each other in any way possible until one of them couldn't get up anymore. He goes on to say that it was more a show of manliness and brute strength than the subtle art that would soon develop. Now, in his defence, he's probably looked at a few historical books. Here we have the, uh, the Folio Society uh, bridged reprint of Boxiana, and in it, it's got some of Pierce Egan's original words. Let me read you what he says. Assuming I can find it, of course. Ah, here we go. Talking about Jack Broughton. Jack Broughton, a man we know, was fantastic fantastically skilled, wonderful fighter. Now bear in mind that in Today I Found Out's video, they're saying that the first person who demonstrated any skill was Mendoza. Now this gentleman here, Egan, one of the most prolific writers of the time, is talking about Broughton. Previous to the days of Broughton, it was downright slaughtering, or in the modern acceptation, acceptation, that's an interesting word, isn't it? Uh, or in the modern acceptation, either gluttony, strength, or bottom decided almost every contest. But after Broughton appeared as a professor of the gymnastic art, he drew crowds about him to witness his exhibitions. There was a neatness about his method, completely new and unknown to his auditors. He stopped the blows aimed at any part of him by his antagonists with so much skill, and hit his man away with so much ease that he astonished and terrified his opponents beyond measure. So... The writers of the day disagree with Today I Found Out. Clearly, the first skilled boxer wasn't Mendoza. Broughton was obviously skilled, but let's go back a little bit here. Broughton was commonly accepted to have been taught the art of boxing by Fig. Fig fought 261 matches that he won and one that he lost. That's 270 fights, only one of which he's on record as having lost. Are we honestly expected to believe that a man won 269 out of 270 fights? Kind of out of luck? Out of not really minding being hit? It's just not true. How can anybody believe that for hundreds and thousands of years, humans have fought? As, for as long as we have historical records, we have proof that humans fought in systematic ways. Yet, because we have modern boxing, and we consider that to be scientific, everything that came before it must therefore be unscientific and unskilled. That's clearly not true. This is a major issue with the HEMA community in general, is that we're constantly fighting against people who say that what we do now has evolved from what we did before, therefore what we did before was not as skillful. That's not true. That is a logical fallacy of the most fundamental level. What we can say is what we do now fits the rule set that we have now better than what came before, else it would not have evolved. 
Fighting adapts to the rules that are available. When Broughton introduced his rules, things were no longer allowed and boxing changed. It was at that point that people decided that what was before must have been less scientific. That's clearly not true. This is exactly the same problem as you get when people who are fans of boxing, and I'm a fan of boxing, don't get me wrong, I love boxing. I love watching skilled boxers, in the main. Um, it depends how we describe skill. I love certain styles of boxing much more than others, but that's, that's for another video. Boxing is a great and skillful art. But when people are obsessed by boxing and they look at mixed martial arts, they consider it to be unskillful because it's different. And they see the punching as different from the punching in boxing and therefore it must be worse. And that's not true. It's simply different. The style that people used to fight in the pugilistic era was not the same as the style that people currently use to fight in boxing, or indeed in modern MMA. So to suggest that what they were doing wasn't skillful because what we do must be is clearly not right. Anyway, let's go back to this basic premise. There's, there's something about human nature that looks at what came before and sees what we have now as being better. We see ourselves as being the pinnacle, and that's the issue here. That's why all of these contemporary writers pick somebody, and they say that they were the pinnacle. And usually the contemporary writers pick the person that was fighting when they were learning and enjoying boxing, and that was the best thing. So in effect, what we have is this myth that boxers just used to stand there and swing their arms and let their opponent hit them, and whoever could take the most damage was the winner. There is no way that you would get through 270 fights doing that and not die. It simply can't happen. And we know it's not true, because we have contemporary records of Fig that describe him as unusually skillful. We've got records of Broughton that describe him as unusually skillful. We've got records of Mendoza that describe him as unusually skillful. All the way up to the modern day where people are saying, Mayweather, he's the best boxer that's ever lived. Great, he's got a brilliant record. He's never been beaten. He is undoubtedly a great boxer. Take away his rule set, Take away the context within, what he, within which he fights, would he be so good? Probably not. He's clearly a consumer athlete, as were all the people before him. So he'd be able to learn, but that doesn't mean that that person is the pinnacle. It just means they are currently better than their competition. Now, if the argument had been that Today we have modern science, we have sports science, we have nutritional science, we have evidence-based training regimes, and we use those to create better fighters. Great, I get behind that. Clearly, those things are great at making you better at doing what you do. But does that mean that prior to Mendoza, or Broughton, or Fig, or whoever it is you want to talk about, People used, just used to stand there and hit each other in the face until one of them fell over. No, it doesn't mean that. That's a stupid thing to say. Stop saying it. If you aren't currently subscribed, please hit the subscribe button, uh, hit the little bell icon, and then you'll get notifications when I post new videos. Hit the like if you haven't already, and stick something in the comments. What do you think? Do you agree? Was Mendoza the first boxer to ever display any skill? Or was it Broughton? Or is just the whole concept of boxers not being skillful despite doing something for a living as preposterous to you as it is to me? So I'll stop ranting and briefly wish you a very happy new year. Look at this marvelous t-shirt. Now I know some of you have bought some of these. Please send me some pictures. Let me see them. I'd love to see people wearing these t-shirts. If you'd like to get a t-shirt like this, check the link down below. Uh, they're awesome, really comfy, really nice quality, and they have on them every single championship prize fight fought within the pugilistic era. 
why wouldn't you want one?